Our third inductee for 2012 also traces his passion for the Corvette to the 53 model. Catching a glimpse of a local dealer driving a 53 white with red interior Corvette model, Bob McDormand was hooked. In 1965, he purchased his first dealership, taking it from having sold no Corvettes to becoming one of the top Corvette dealerships in the country. Bob created a collection of Corvettes and GM products primarily Chevrolets. At one point he had over 200 cars in his collection, over 100 Corvettes, at least one of every year of Corvette. It was one of the most significant Corvette collections in the world. The buildings Bob built were 60 by 200, if I remember correctly, and he built six or seven of them to house his collection. Bob's collection contained a number of celebrity cars. John Mellencamp, Dwight Yoakam, A.J. Foyt, Ellen Jackson, Burt Reynolds, George Strait, Johnny Carson, Mario Andretti, and Dinah Shore, to name several. Bob looked for uh, Vin Ones. Uh, for a period of time, he had the uh, Vin Two 1968 Corvette, which was the earliest available car because General Motors did a burn test on Vin One and it kind of went away. Bob McDormand has uh, been the lead sponsor of the Capital City Corvette Club in Columbus, Ohio since 1975. That's when our club started. Uh, our club working along with and supporting Bob also. Uh, Bob would do car shows here on his lot starting back in the early 70s. And Every year Bob has a charity show and he brings out all the cars. He would have all of the cars brought out, even the ones that didn't run were pushed out or towed out and put in place around his property. He actually set the pace for what we call the Corvette car show world today of the bigger shows of Carlisle, the National Corvette Museum, Bloomington, etc. Bob set the pace and he was doing that back in 1975. Called Corvettes on the Canal, these shows raised over $275,000 for the local children's hospitals. He's quite a guy. He's supported that for years, and I believe the total has been over a quarter million dollars, maybe over half a million dollars that he's collected for the charity of the Children's Hospital. But Bob doesn't just give to large, well-established charities. We had a lady uh, family contact us who's in a nursing home. It was always her desire to go for a ride in a Corvette. They would ask her, what do you need, Rob? And she says, I need a ride in a red Corvette. One Saturday afternoon, we arrived at the nursing home with about 25 Corvettes. We allowed her to pick which Corvette she wanted. She picked a 2010 Corvette Grand Sport, crystal red in color. She didn't know it, but our ride from the nursing home in Northern Columbus down to Canal Winchester to Bob McDormand's dealership, where Bob had opened up all of his barns back here for his entire collection, for her to see his collection on a Sunday afternoon. That's just the type of person Bob is. In addition to all this Corvette-connected charity work, Bob has long been a major supporter of the Corvette Museum. And to think it all began with a simple phone call. He called us when we were selling a VIN number one. And immediately, Bob jumped on board. It wasn't like, well, I might want to help you guys out. It was like, what can I do? How can I be involved in the museum? Bob was, uh, again, was a visionary, I guess, like Patrick. He uh, saw that this was a great idea and a good place for Corvette people to be able to come to see the car. Uh, he's been an avid supporter over the years. At one point, he was even able to supply the director with a car to drive for several years. At the C5 birthday bash in 2001, I believe it was, he was sitting to my left, and Bob leaned over and said, I'm going to provide the Corvette for Wendell to drive. You can tell him that. Well, when I announced that Bob had just agreed to supply a Corvette to Wendell, the entire room exploded. It took about 10 minutes to get everybody under control. And I said, Bob, please come up and say a few words. Bob came up. He was very emotional, and everyone was. It was, it was just, you could feel the electricity in the room. And someone said, what kind of car would you get, Wendell? And Wendell said, well, I picked this car for the celebrity choice because it's what I'd get if I got my own Corvette. Magnetic red, beige interior, beige top, convertible, automatic with heads-up display. Now, I'm sitting back at the table with Bob, and Bob leans over and says, I picked a car out of stock to drive here. Magnetic red, beige interior, beige top, convertible, automatic with heads-up. I'll leave it for him tomorrow morning. 
When I made the announcement, only about half the people came to their feet. The rest thought, this is fixed. There's no way this naturally happened this way, and it did. And that's how Wendell came to get a Corvette for about five and a half years, I believe, Bob supplied it. He has had, over the years, an extensive collection of Corvettes, and many have been on display down here at the museum. He was always, whenever I would ask him to support the museum, he was right there. He never said no. And he's just a fantastic guy. I mean, he, when he gets behind you, you know you got somebody behind you. Once again, Bob is just a giving individual, never stops giving, always trying to see what he can do for somebody else. Spends a great amount of time and energy and money with local charities. It's for those reasons I believe that Bob is well-deserving being inducted into the National Corvette Museum's Hall of Fame. Our third inductee into the National Corvette Museum Hall of Fame for 2012, Bob McDormand.